Odyssey, Odyssey playing Alleluia. Good morning. Let's try it again. Good morning. Ah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas, where it is always, and today is no exception, a perfect day in paradise. Great to see you here in this beautiful Sunday morning in this spiritual community that believes that God is all there is. Whatever you call that creative magnificence, it's all that there is, and that's all that you are, that's all that we are, singly and together, and we are sharing that good news with ourselves and the world this morning. I want to welcome you. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are absolutely welcome here this morning. If this is your first time in this spiritual community, we just open our arms to you. We consider you an honored guest, and inside your program is an important piece of cardboard called a connection card, and that's for everybody to write, put your name on, put the date on it, let us know you were here today. But for our first time and our second time guests, we want to know that you're here for the first or second time. Fill out the card as much as you choose to do uh, and let us know who you are, where we can find you, how we can connect with you, and how you can stay connected with us. So it's a wonderful opportunity for you to share your life with us and yourself with us this morning. When our service ends after a bit, you will find a, a place for you, a special place for you in the lobby called the Welcome Center. It is where you can meet a group of people, start finding names of people who love this place and would love to share it more with you. They can answer questions for you. They can show you around. And there's a little uh, booklet there that you can take with you to read more about our faith and philosophy, what we believe, and it can help explain why you feel a connection or a resonance to what we are 
all about here this morning. So welcome, welcome, welcome. It is actually the Ides of March today. Didn't work out so well for Caesar, but I think we're good. I think. I hope. It's up to Roger, I think, because he's the one that said it first this morning. So we have some information to share with you before we launch into our celebration. I want to bring Michelle Taylor to the platform because this is a Global Heart Connection Day. It is our international outreach ministry. It's a big, full, fun, and very enlightening day. All right. So the season for nonviolence ends uh, actually Easter Sunday. And so we wanted to give you an update on our partnership with uh, Kenya and the sponsorships. And so, here are our accomplishments. We have paid for all of her Science of Mind students the certification fees, which was $45 a piece. So 16 students will be receiving certificates when she goes back in the fall. So yay for us. <laughs> Martin's tuition is paid. He will enjoy his second year of high school. He's on his way to becoming a doctor, which is what he wanted. Yay. Between the Alberta Church and us, we have provided uniforms for all but 10 students in grades three through eight. So if you're interested, we still have 10 children who would really like to have a school uniform. Um, I don't have pictures for you. You know, we've been putting pictures up, but Jeffrey, the headmaster for the school, his brother um, passed away. And so he's been in the home village um, for three weeks trying to get a funeral arranged. So here's an interesting fact about Kenya. And that is that so many people have been dying in his village, it has taken three weeks to be able to schedule the um, funeral. And in the meantime, their responsibility is to provide food and lodging for relatives and friends who come. So it's a very expensive process and often the families wind up being bankrupt. So that's just a little, now we know. All right, so come and um, sponsor kids. And with the money for, um, for school supplies, we were able to purchase four, four complete textbooks. This is the first year that the children have had textbooks in their school at all. With the money from Alberta, Reverend Connie was able to buy one set of textbooks for the teachers. They didn't have textbooks to know what they were supposed to be teaching. And now we have provided four complete sets for one classroom. So if you're interested in getting books in the hands, they have pictures, which is very exciting for the kids because you're sitting there 12 hours listening to lectures all day. So now we have some pictures to look at. Okay. The lunch program, um, the money we raised um, will feed four children um, for the year because I divided it into 12. So if you're interested in helping us get food for the kids, we also have more opportunities for that. The, um, they're in school for 12 hours, six days a week and they have no lunch program. So that's what we're trying to provide. And as well, the home school, um, the home lunch program for those children who had to be um, either go to work or move to the village um, and could not come to school because there was no um, food in the house. And we have $6 a month for each of those child, um, children's families but Duncan's family has six kids, six people in the family. So if you're interested in helping with the food program, we have opportunities out there. And there's one thing that we don't have a, um, a slide up there. One of the kids um, who had been removed from school because his family could not pay the registration fee uh, went to Jeffrey and said, please, can I come back to school? I just want to learn. And we paid his registration. So also in the courtyard, we have soapstone um, and baskets and beaded bracelets. All of these are made. One of the um, Reverend Connie's Science of Mind students, Michael, he's the one that drives um, six hours to study with her every week. He owns a soapstone factory and he hires widows to do the work in the soapstone factory and then the proceeds from the factory go to support an orphanage that is up there near his village. So the money here is doing double and triple work by employing and then also helping an orphanage. So we have wonderful things that she managed to get down to us because of the minister's conference. So stop by and take a look. And then the last thing is today is our luncheon. So it's the um, St. Patrick's Day, ole, because I do not know how to make Irish stew, so I know how to make tortilla soup. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. 
And then I added oy vey because it's such an odd combination. <laughs> so please stop by. The soup is vegetarian, and uh, so feel free about that. And it's $10 for adults, five for children, and every single dollar goes back to help with our um, sponsorship in Kenya. So please come and help us feed and educate the world. And then Sabrina requested that we're having the book sale and we collect those books because now with 16 students, they need things to read. They do read in English. English is their second language over there. Um, but she's asked that we please um, give us the books. Don't leave them in the office because we're trying to keep the office nice and tidy. So bring your books on Sundays, hand them to one of the Global Heart people, and we'll be very happy to have, sell them back to somebody else in April. Thank you. day for that, uh, and the luncheon is going to be fabulous. If you've ever eaten the food they prepare, you know it's wonderful. I'm bringing up Bobby Williams and Judy Poteet because they have created a Wow Wednesday experience this week at 7 p.m. They're going to share some about that. What's coming up? I'll play my movie first. It's so good. I used to be a plumber, now I'm a wish or was film editor. <laughs> it was getting better. You know, just a, a, almost precisely 12 and a half years ago today, a young lady left Las Vegas at 4 o'clock in the morning. She left at 4 o'clock in the morning because her and her boyfriend were addicted to drugs and alcohol and gambling. So if you're addicted to gambling in Las Vegas and have a very big debt, Leaving at 4 o'clock in the morning is a great idea. <laughs> we have a lot of uh, uh, suicides where people shoot themselves in the back with a shotgun when they owe money to the hotels. <laughs> so at any rate, uh, that was uh, about 12 years ago in 2003. Uh, today, the reason I mention this is this young lady is going to come and visit in California. She's a representative for a major educational institution and she's going to be making calls in California. When she left, she ended up in Florida. She found a unity uh, organization there, which, of course, is our sister philosophy, you might say. Uh, she joined Alcoholics Anonymous, and she comes back to us to visit me next week um, uh, because she's my granddaughter. And the reason I'm telling that story this morning is Wednesday we're going to be talking about turning probabilities and possibilities. possibilities into probabilities. And, and uh, it's such a great example of the idea and the concept and the revelation that an individual can completely convert themselves into from being a student, not even a student, I don't give a damn one way or the other, to a teacher of a great philosophy. So I hope you'll join us. Talk about going from surviving to thriving. She has done that. And that's what we'll be doing Wednesday night, exploring how to find those possibilities and what to do with them when we get them. Thank you. There are some amazing things happening on our Wednesday night experiences in here, and it's always preceded at 5.30 by soup dinner across the way. It's just, it's not just. It's soup. Last week there was chili. Oh my gosh, gosh, it was wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm trying an Irish brogue out this morning. Oh my gosh. Uh, it sounded more Hebrew. But anyway, um, <laughs> soup, salad, bread, desserts, fabulous. A dollar a bowl starting at 5.30 every Wednesday before the event in here. Um, there's going to be a special event Friday night in our Gourmets for God fundraising um, experience for this year. And it's Friday night, and it's, uh, it's called the 
dinner lounge event, and it's at 6.30 p.m. over in the great room. There are tickets available still for it because we can get up to 100 people in there, and it's going to be a wonderful evening of uh, entertainment from Doug Roll, who many of you know, and he's a wonderful pianist and vocalist. And then there's going to be an open mic, and you never know what's going to happen on that kind of experience. So there are tickets available in the Beacon of Light bookstore, and there's an RSVP in your program if you would let people know you're coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. I plan to be there, so that's going to be great. We are still looking for people who, uh, in our congregation who are interested and available to serve on a special project, like a one-time volunteering thing. If you have availability in your schedule and would be willing to be on call for whatever, you can always say no, but it's just, I'm available, I'm interested in just kind of dipping my toe into this, check that box on your connection card, and um, you might get a call that says, hey, we have a need for five people at, at noon on Wednesday, can you be here? So that's going to happen as well. Um, all of this is in your program. You'll see flyers around the center for the events that we're hosting and sponsoring, and it's wonderful to stay connected to spirit in this way. But we're going to move into a time that we are also uh, doing in observance of Season for Nonviolence, which is the little slips of paper in your program that's one of them's kind of a bright green, another one's purple. We're going to pull those out because we're going to spend some time embracing and releasing so that we can fully enter our celebration. Debbie Little is going to come forward and lead us through this time of embracing and releasing in recognition of the season for nonviolence. So if you take out your slips, the green and the purple, and this is the season for nonviolence, to create a world that works for everyone and what our responsibility is in that and it's to know the truth that each of us is the presence of God and to look within, to be the change that I want to see in the world because it has to start with us. And on this green slip, we're gonna do the embrace first. And it says, today, I remember to embrace the inner connection. The inner connection is our connection with spirit, with God, with that peace that we find within ourselves. It is our connection. I remember a long time ago, I was troubled and chaos was in my life. And I said, what do I need to do to find that peace within myself? And a friend of mine told me to breathe in and just say, I feel the peace within. It aligns me. It's like, it's a connection that goes through my body because I know that if I'm at a place of peace then I can do the work for myself and I can spread that peace to everyone that I come in contact with it's that interconnection with ourself with our soul with spirit with God finding that beautiful place that we can go whenever we're troubled whenever we have a challenge and say peace is where I am and it's still, after all these years, it's like a string pulls down within me and connects me to it, and I feel it throughout my whole body. The next slip is for you to contemplate. Today, I choose to release restriction. For just a moment, I would like you to close your eyes or just be in that space to contemplate what this word means to you. Is there something inside yourself that feels tight, that feels angry, that feels like you're just so restricted that sometimes you just can't move? Take a moment within yourself, I'm not judging anything about yourself, not criticizing this part of you that maybe is restricted or feels tense or if when you're watching the news you feel angry inside. So take a moment and close your eyes, think of this word, and after this brief silence, I'm gonna ask you to take a pen, write down what you feel inside is restricting you, and let it go, and we take it, and when we pray over it, the Global Heart Connection, and we release it also for you into the nothingness where it came. So just take a few seconds of silence, and then after we open our eyes, please write on the slips, and then they will be collected. So close your eyes, take in a breath, release.
So if you gently open your eyes and take the time to write on the slip and to fold it and take this one home with you and write on here how you feel that interconnection with spirit in your life. And then we will, the ushers will come along and collect these. Right here, Paul. Okay. Thank you. In fact, we're going to drop those into the baskets as we start singing about the energy of God because it is an appropriate thing. So as you finish and fold, we're going to have some music going. And as you feel it's ready, you're ready for it and you're able, go ahead and get to your feet. Stay on your feet. Go ahead and stand up. The baskets will come around as we're standing and singing. That's good. Because it's about release Absolutely. and celebrating energy. Yes, it goes like this. I am the energy of God. 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 That's all it is. We'll be the energy of love. Yeah, you are. Absolutely. Oh, I am. I am the energy of love. I am the energy of love. I am the energy of love. Joy. Joy. Here we go. I am the energy of joy. 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 Well, I hear the clapping in the front. Let's clap toward the back. I am the energy of peace. 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 All right. Back to God. Back to God. Always back to God. Oh, yeah. I am the energy of God. I am the energy of God. I am the energy of God. That's it. All right. Share that energy with each other. Shake a hand, get a hug, and introduce yourself to the people around you. Are we going to do that over here? So just take a deep breath. <sighs> As we move into this morning's contemplation time, I invite you to take out your cell phones and silence them, please. 
So let's begin with this week's affirmation from your program. You may choose to cut it out and read it aloud often this week to remind yourself of the truth of your being. So let's read it together. I choose to live my life consciously and concretely, moment by moment, choosing attitudes and actions which cause my life to flourish and expand. So now I just invite you to take another mindful breath and allow the music to take us into a silent place, followed by this morning's invocation. I'm so grateful for the silence. For it's in the silence that I remember who I am. It's in the silence that I experience the truth that God is. And it's not just a positive sentiment. It's reality. God is. And I am so blessed to be awake to that truth. That God is. For in the realization of that, I know who I am. And I'm filled with awe and wonder and love and joy and the awareness of beauty in the realization of who I am. For I am all of that and more.
And I'm so grateful that my soul has woken me up and brought me here and is allowing me to live a life aligned with truth and possibility and connection with others on the deepest level. For as I recognize the truth of who I am, I recognize it in others. So I know that I am a point of light. I am the place where God shows up uniquely, perfectly, wholly. And as I remember this, that which I uniquely am and that which I uniquely have to give is revealed to me. Our lives are meant to be lived with ease and grace. And in this moment, I remember that. And I am grateful that there is an infinite intelligence that is living me, that breathes me, that expresses as me in every way. What a holy moment each moment is that I remember this truth. So I know that each one of us here today is open and receptive. That simply by being open, by being, that which I need to know is revealed to me. For I am lived by this infinite intelligence and I truly can let go and let God and be a witness of my life unfolding as grace in perfect ways. And so it is. CSL. We heard about the global heart. I love that phrase. Uh, for me, that experience of the global heart is facilitated by mantra. So a part of this song is going to be in Sanskrit. So I want to share the words to you. Loka, repeat. Samasta, Samasta, Sukino, Sukino, Bhavantu, Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free, including you. Vantu 
época só no está su que no van tu dicen loca só no está su que no van tu loca Some of stars who can know of unto to do to do Thank you. Thank you so much.
had the best loving kindness meditation ever. Girish, thank you for all of you for being here. And um, I want to I want to acknowledge and thank Cheryl Slater and her team at Blue Sky Yoga for bringing him to us. And he uh, he dazzled last they they dazzled last night. It was a profound experience here last night. And uh, glad that you're here. Thank you for coming back to share with us this morning. Hi. You're shining like diamonds. Shine bright like a diamond. We could do a mashup of that and shine bright like a... No, never mind. Anyway, so, um, so the, the theme, general theme for the month, this month is from surviving to thriving, which is, I love that idea because so many of us, uh, probably all of us at some point in our lives, at least once, have been in survival mode and we all know what that feels like to us, right? And so moving from surviving to thriving can be a profoundly... Uh, amazing experience. And the, the theme comes from the theme from our spiritual living convention that happened here in town a couple of we a few weeks ago now. Um, and that was the general theme of the convention. And they had wonderful um, sessions and topics and speakers from all, all walks of life coming in to talk about that regarding how spiritual communities can move from surviving to thriving. Because a lot of our communities have had years of struggle, uh, especially maybe in the last eight or nine years or so. And so how can we emerge from that and move not only into just being healthier, but also thriving. And what does that feel like? And so what my delight is, is to bring, yes, some of that to this congregation. For those of you who are interested in hearing about how what we heard, those of us from here who attended the convention, how we are looking to apply that and what we learned from it and how that might help this community move into a more thriving experience as well. But my delight this month is also in making those topics more personally relevant so that we can all have that individualized experience of moving more into a thriving life. And then collectively, as this Center for Spiritual Living, we automatically thrive in a greater way. So I think first what we'll do is um, re review the definition of thrive, because I, w I want everybody in the room to be able to, to be okay with at least one of these for your life. To prosper, be fortunate, or successful. Can everybody maybe hang with one of those at least? Or to grow or develop vigorously, flourish. So I would assume that everybody in the room can, can connect with one of those ideas. And that's the idea of thriving that we want to look at for our own lives. But what I want to do first is talk about it from the center's perspective. You know, how, how this Center for Spiritual Living's use of, in this case, social media can, can help us to thrive. So this is, this is based on the, um, the, the session that we had there on social media as a form of um, ministry or spiritual practice. And so how, how can we as Center for Spiritual Living do that? Well, number one maybe is the why. Now, I know that a lot of you are connected to some social media, and it is the way that millions and millions and millions and millions of people connect and communicate. So it makes sense that we would do the same thing, right? It just makes sense because as the presenter of this session shared with us, soon Facebook the population of Facebook will make it the third largest country on earth. Okay, wow. So that's important. So from a marketing, yes, from a marketing perspective, our use of that can help. It can help let the world know, let the, let the greater Las Vegas area know that we are here. That's certainly one of the things that it can do. It can, we can market with this. But I think it goes far beyond that because it is actually a way that ministry happens. It is a way that we can help to fulfill our mission, both our current mission, which is we practice and teach life-enhancing spiritual principles through affirmative prayer, meditation, and service. Our use of these social media platforms can help us to fulfill not only our current mission, but that mission that is emerging as we evolve together as this Center for Spiritual Living to change lives and make the world a better place by inspiring conscious union with God in the minds and hearts of all we serve. Our use of these tools and technologies can certainly help to do that. And it is what we are, in fact, doing in our use of social media. We are doing it on platforms right now, especially like Facebook and Twitter. Those are the two that we have chosen uh, to do ministry by and using Meetup to get folks excited about or knowing about what's going on here so that they show up to experience that. 
So one of the things that we've done is we've hired somebody called a social media manager, and that is somebody whose business it is to help us coordinate and, um, and unify our use of these media and, and, and using cross-platforms along with our website and our e-newsletter and those kind of things so that what we are presenting to the world is unified and it has our own distinctive look and feel and it's something that we, um, that we want to present to the world in a much greater way. And you are seeing, what you'll, so what you're seeing around the center now is this and you'll see it on our web, uh, website and our e-blast and stuff. It's like these are the two ways that we're focusing on that right now, Facebook and Twitter. So find us there, you know, do that kind of thing. And so you might start or continue connecting in that way by becoming a part of our Facebook presence or our Twitter presence. So how many of you have liked our Facebook page, the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas? Oh, awesome, Jeff, look around, that's kind of cool. So like is more than a feeling nowadays, if you don't know. It's an actual action. It is something that you do. And so you like not only our basic page, but things that we post. And then you share them, and those kind of things happen, and it begins to exponentially then reach other people. So the things that we are posting are really wonderful, the things that are, that are going out. And so we invite you to become more involved in that. Believe it or not, I actually did finally like our Facebook page. I was not, not recently. I did that a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Mao. Um, <laughs> I was number 500. I was the 500th fan of this center. Better late than never. But we now have 1,110 fans. So, you know, I, you know, that's a good thing. So if you haven't gone onto that and, be, and liked us in general, I mean, you like us, but you haven't liked us, then do that. Become, become a fan of our page. And since we have become more disciplined with what we are doing on this platform especially, and thank you, thank you, thank you, especially to Jeff, Masagatani and Michelle Sloan and Neil Hayner for really providing this loving service. The number of people that we reach by our postings and by our page, so the number of people that have an awareness of what we're doing in the world has gone from just over 2,000 to well over 6,000 just in the last month. So that's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. A couple of weeks ago, one of the examples of this is Neil. He's in the media room right now, but he paid out of his own pocket to boost a post about our Wednesday, the play that we presented here last week. Um, and that resulted in 4,600 people seeing that post. That is exponentially greater, exponentially greater than the number of people normally who see a single post. So yes, we can and we do use this as a ministry tool. And it can only be better and more effective the more that people Use it. <clears throat> Ahem. I'm, I'm, I'm acting all sheepish and ahemming because um, my, in some circles, my reluctance to use Facebook is pretty legendary. And uh, I have been a part of that group that has just simply not gotten on that particular bandwagon yet. I do have a Facebook page. I do have a Facebook account. I created it while I was on sabbatical almost six years ago. And I am rarely on Facebook, and I never communicate that way. It's been almost six years. Up until now. Up until now. Or I'll say soon. Look, I, I have to make sure that I can commit to this. And stuff. I'm not going to make any promises that I'm going to be held to. What about Twitter? Yes, I have a Twitter account, but I've never tweeted. <laughs> so what is my resistance about? What is that about for me? There's a couple of things that are kind of natural and normal for me. First of all, by nature, and I don't know if you believe this or not, but by nature, I am shy, and I am quite private. And to my awareness level of Facebook, it seems to me that a great number of those millions and millions of people use it in a way that to me is just way too much information. <laughs> I just really don't want to know some of that. Some of that. And I guess, I guess I look at myself and think, I don't find myself that interesting. So maybe, maybe it's not for me. I don't know about that. Um, and the other thing for me is that I have this rather deep-seated concern or fear that when I finally land in the world of Facebook, I'm going to be finding so many squirrels to chase, like this one. 
that is the namaste squirrel. And it says, the squirrel in me recognizes the squirrel in you. <laughs> I just have a concern that that's going to be what I do most of my day. And I'm not entirely sure that I have enough discipline not to do that. So that's been another of my concerns because I certainly can lose myself in the world of electronics quite, quite easily. And um, there are so many of those kinds of things out there to get lost in, aren't there? Now, because of my legendary resistance to this, my beloved friend and colleague, Reverend Cindy DeLong, has this thing that she has instead done, which is, don't, she doesn't say, look at this on Facebook, she emails me the picture. Because <laughs> she knows that I'll do email. And by the way, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned, uh, on the first Sunday of March, I mentioned a retirement of a minister that some of you thought was Reverend Cindy, that she had retired from us. That is not the case. Here she sits. There she is. She is still serving and working and being the magnificent presence that she is in our community. Yeah. Who retired the first uh, Sunday of March was Reverend Cynthia Clare, who up until then was the senior pastor of the Las Vegas Center for Spiritual Living up on North Rancho. She retired from the community that she founded, and we are blessing her in her new life and travel experience with her beloved Dr. Tom. And that center, as it undergoes now, the co-creation process to reveal its new leader. We're blessing Reverend Cynthia. We're loving Reverend Cindy, who is still among us. So anyway, so she will send me those things because she knows that I do not, uh, up until now, um, get those kinds of things via Facebook. So anyway, what I am coming to know and to realize and to then agree with is that I must adapt and I must adopt. Yes? That can only be good. It can only be good for me and... And one of the things that happened at this convention a couple of weeks ago was the presenter. Her name is Lindy Brower, and she was wonderful. And she packed into two and a half hours more information than, I'm, than I can possibly digest. But um, one of the things that she did set my mind and my heart really at ease very well. She said, not every platform is for everyone. We're all wired a little bit differently for that. And we had wonderful, um, a wonderful booklet that we could kind of take a little communication test almost and see sort of the way we were wired and how, it, how we could best use these new media or these technologies for our own communication and connection kinds of things. And so that was really good, that we should find our own preferred platform and work from there. And so I can do the same in my own use of social media. Not only us as a center, we've chosen Facebook and Twitter right now, but my own use of social media, I can do that as well if I wish to use it as a part of my spiritual practice, and I do. So, Jeff, another thing that happened this morning was I, first of all, put Facebook on my phone. <laughs> and second, for the very first time ever, I stood in this room and I checked in. So those of you who have Facebook on your phone and a Facebook account, go ahead and just do that while I'm talking to you. Just check in. It's a little late to let people know you're here, but God knows this service is going on forever, so we might still be here <laughs> by the time they get here. It'll be fine. Um, so there's that. You know, it's just another way of getting the word out. It's like, I'm not sure how many people care that I'm here, but I let them know, via, I guess, that happens via Facebook, so everybody that is, I'm friended with can know. Which, and I know if, if you're in the queue to be my friend, hang in there <laughs> soon. <laughs> no, Michelle Sloan looked at my, we pulled up my Facebook page a couple weeks ago, and she was like, Really? I don't know what all those numbers and faces and icons mean up there, but anyway, we're, I'm going to get some coaching on that. So let's bring this home. How can we use this individually? How can we use this as spiritual practice? Well, first of all, let me say that I suspect many of you are already doing that. If you think that, if you, if you believe that your use of social media is a part of your spiritual practice, let me see your hand. Yeah, a good number of people, 20, 25 people say, this is part of my spiritual practice. This is how I am doing the work of spirit in the world. Well, Lindy Brower at the convention had a great metaphor for applying this idea, and we can do it in our, in our personal lives as well. Oh, look, it's a giant, meaty chunk of lasagna. For all you vegetarians, I apologize. It is turkey lasagna, but anyway. Um, but let me start with the basic building, block, basic building block of lasagna, which is the noodle, right? What is the noodle? So what is our noodle? What is my noodle? <laughs> what is your noodle? What is <laughs> Did you think you would hear that in church ever? Um, then <laughs> the noodle is what platform or what platforms will I use? What is that? How am I going to begin to expand my spiritual practice, if that is what I'm choosing to do, 
what is that for me? And so we, in that communication test I talked about, according to that little spur-of-the-moment test, my, my style prefers to use email, Twitter, LinkedIn, and text messaging. Hmm. The two of those I'm pretty good at. The other two, not so much yet. Um, so that would be, according to that little test, my noodle. That's how I would communicate most naturally and best with the world or connect with my spiritual practice that way. So first the noodle, then the sauce. The sauce is the settings that you use, like the, the, uh, the filters, the target audience that you want to reach with whatever it is that you're doing. So how is it, what are the settings that you use in whatever platform you're using? And then the meat of it, if it, there's meat or the filler or whatever, cheese, well, there's, more ch there's cheese to come. The meat is the message, right? The meat is the message. What is it that I want to communicate? What is my purpose in doing this? And, and how, how do I want to do that? I found this fabulous blog article by a woman who calls herself Mirror. Nice, because we all are that. Um, she's a yoga instructor, and her website is called Business from the Heart, and she lives in the countryside of Australia and does this work that way. Um, and this is part of what she wrote, and this for me was very moving. She said, how we engage on Facebook is reflected in our lives offline. How we engage on Facebook is the consciousness we are creating more of in the world. Many of us are here on a spiritual path, one dedicated to love, connection with source, and making a difference on earth through inspired action. One dedicated to the dropping of all masks, all pretense, all disguise, attachment, ego, and desire. So what if we started showing more of ourselves as light beings in physical bodies online? What if we gave a wider perspective on our shared humanity in every conversation? What if this was a spiritual path? Perhaps here in this space, we, we can create some small shift in consciousness, some deepening into reality rather than just deepening into what we want each other to see. But I want to claim this space, be creative in my approach, continue to live on the crazy, tender, wild edge of transformation the Internet makes possible on this planet today. Do you want a world filled with only the brightest, shiniest, most polished aspects of you? A world full of shallow expressions of interest, pretension, and social value counted in numbers of likes and the amount of friends you have? Or do you want a place where more truth leads to more love? Of freedom tasted and easy expression of who you are in this body now. An ocean of status updates that might just create a little less self-consciousness world filled with kinder, more open, and real hearts. We are making it happen right now with every conversation, word, photo, link, video, and more. We are creating the future. So that is a profound call to transform consciousness with every aspect of the work and the, and the presence that you have in the world via social media. She's, in her case, it's specifically in Facebook. On her blog, she allows replies or comments. And some of the, some, if you were at all on blogs and comments of, postings and stuff, you can see the dark, the dark side of that sometimes, but hers she has chosen at least to, to show only the ones that, that do that, that do that mission, that fulfill that mission that she's got. And this reply is from a woman who lives in the United States, again, halfway around the world from where uh, she's doing her work. And Deborah Carson wrote, I used to get sucked into all the drama and negative political propaganda that sadly consumes the U.S. right now. Today, I no longer pay attention to it, and in fact have blocked many people who post such rubbish. I don't even watch the news because it is all so negative. I began sharing on Facebook what I felt was relevant about life, our own true nature, the teachings I was learning in school, quotes I felt people needed to hear, mainly about gratitude, living in the moment, feeling and experiencing love, and belonging. At first, my friends didn't know what to make of it, but then, got, but then it caught on with several of them and attracted other people, and they got it too. I was surrounding myself with like-minded people on Facebook. The ones that didn't like my postings unfriended me. Kind of like that commercial I love to joke about, I unfriend you. That's not the way that it works. Mm. Uh, they unfriended me or just dropped out of sight. And she says, sort of like the trash taking itself out. <laughs> I didn't want to play politics and drama anymore because it's not a path with heart to me. Sometimes I post things I'm frustrated or sad about because I think you're right. Part of the journey toward authenticity definitely is the ability to show vulnerability. This gives others a sense that you love and trust them enough to tell them the truth. 
and that places value on relationships. However, the more I embrace my new lifestyle, the more I am able to sit with myself in silence, observe my feelings, pleasant or unpleasant, and acknowledge them equally without embracing them so fully they send me over the edge. It's a good place to be and getting better all the time. I am very grateful to my newer, shinier Facebook friends for taking this journey into love and light with me. And I am also grateful for finding you and your blog. We are all teachers inside us and to one another. Namaste. So somebody responded. Somebody heard that and said, yeah, that's what I want to do too. And I began to shift the way I show up, even in social media. And some people didn't get it, and they can't, they can't, they can't resonate with it. And they took themselves out of the equation. That's an amazing thing to happen. So when I, when I think about and wonder about social media as spiritual practice, I always and can't help but think with love about Moses Soriano. You know, I, be, I first became aware of what he was doing in the world through social media via a Facebook page that he wrote called The Truth Is. I don't even know if his name appeared there, uh, but it was just called The Truth Is. And some of the things that were written on that, that he wrote on that Facebook page were amazing. And then his own personal Facebook page and the posts that he would make were just the only thing that he shined in all of what he did there was light and love and wisdom and encouragement. And as his life neared its end, his human life neared its end, he shared with me his great satisfaction that that's all that he did. It was his intention, and even in the, in the difficulties and challenges that he was experiencing physically, still what he shined was love and light. That is true ministry. That is a beautiful legacy and a powerful spiritual practice because it brought him closer and closer to his source as well and allowed him a sense of satisfaction that what his mission was was being fulfilled. And if I want to really be authentic here about social media and spiritual practice, those silly little cartoons and those funny little videos and those memes that go around, yes, they too can be a part of spiritual practice. So we've got this one. When something goes wrong in your life, just yell, plot twist, and move on. <laughs> right? You thought it was going right? Well, wait, oh, plot twist. Oh, I thought I was writing a different story. So just move on, right? And then there's another one. If I had a dollar for every time I got distracted, I wish I had a puppy. <laughs> Again, now I have two. Yeah. You know what? That too can be spiritual practice. Lightness and laughter like love, those are wonderful energies to inhabit. So that can be part of a spiritual practice, just enjoying, just smiling within, just connecting with that lighthearted aspect of spirit and the truth of who and what you are. So I said in this week's e-blast that, that I would consider expanding my use of social media if I could find spiritual value in it. And of course I have, and I do. And that is the way that it can be and should be for me in my intention to live a spiritual life. So I will be dipping my toes into the social media world a bit more. And I, if you don't know, that is my, that is my nature. I dip my toes into things. I do not rush headlong into anything. I don't fully dive into anything. I am very timid in a lot of the approaches in my life, and it still works. It works really well for me. My life is working very, very well. So it will be the same with this as well. So that's just so you know why I said soon, because it's a dipping the toe kind of thing for me. But it will be good for me. It will help me to feel more connected, both within myself with spirit and with the world. And that is the beauty and the, and the power of this evolutionary thing that we've got here called social media. So for all of us, let's start building our lasagna, whatever your chosen platform is and however you want to get your word out. If you would like to enhance, expand your spiritual practice, you can do that. So the question would be, what noodle will you use? Oh, dear God, there are so many of them. <laughs> what the heck are some of these things? What's the elephant? Huh? Oh, it's that one that's always on a tablet or a smartphone. What's this little guy with one antenna? What's this little gray guy? <laughs> no, Tinky Winky was purple. Email, this would be mine. <laughs> I recognize email. Google Plus, Skype, Instagram, what's the M? Mary Tyler Moore? Anyway, there's a million noodles out there, and probably more coming. So choose your noodle. 
and start building your lasagna. God. Anyway, let's, let's do that. Let's do that individually and collectively because stepping more fully into this kind of spiritual practice, finding ways to expand our spiritual practices is a great way to thrive because it is a reminder of our connection with spirit. Anything that serves to enhance or remind us of our connection is a good thing. And as we remember to do that, to enhance our connection more consistently and more frequently, then then we are going to move in a greater direction of thriving. And as we individually thrive, then this Center for Spiritual Living very naturally and very obviously thrives. So find me on Facebook soon. And so it is. Namaste. (laughs) Yes. All right. And so we take that idea of spiritual practice expanding in new and evolutionary ways into affirmative prayer. I invite you to take in a deep breath as we prepare for this time of prayer. I invite our ministry of prayer to stand, surround this space if you're sitting around the outsides of the sanctuary. If you're on the insides and would rather just stand in place, that's fine. Our ministry of prayer at this center is ministers and practitioners who are dedicated every day to enter into affirmative prayer on behalf of of this spiritual community. It is, it is a wonderful thing to know that this group and the 25 who comprise our, our ministry, 26 who comprise our ministry of prayer are committed to that practice every single day. If you have specific ways that we may support you in prayer, you can write that on your connection card. And what we invite you to do is to state it affirmatively, state a declaration of your intention of what you'd like to experience or become or understand as a result of prayer being spoken for you. We are happy to support that intention through affirmative prayer for the next couple weeks. So you can write that on your connection card. Send that affirmation to the Ministry of Prayer. There are are cards on the wall in the lobby as well where you can state your declaration, what your intention is for prayer. Our Ministry of Prayer are amazing prayers, and it is wonderful to have that support. So I invite you to take in a deep breath with me and allow that breath to fully exhale. And we move into that time of affirmative recognition that there is one here, that one that is all in all. My preferred name for it is God, but there are so many ways that it is known. And it is that absolute and ineffable spiritual magnificence, that truth of all being and all form, that existed before time. In the beginning, God, it says in one scripture. In the beginning of time and space, God already is. That infinite intelligence that creative genius, the power that is absolute, that existed before time and space, and it fills time and space because there was nothing else for the universe to be created from but the very substance of that creator. And so this physical universe is the body of God. Everything, everyone in it, an absolutely necessary, perfect, and whole cell in that one body. And in that one, there can be no other. So there is only wholeness, oneness, perfection, light, love, peace, joy, and wisdom, order, and supply. That one is the truth. No matter what we may identify going on, it's a surface identification. What is true deeply everywhere is this one. And so I accept that as the truth of my being because, again, it is the truth of all being. It is who I am. It is what I am. It is the truth of my life at every moment, whether I am aware of it or not. And I just sink into this awareness, and I stand upon that powerful truth. And I know it is the same reality, the same truth for everyone present. For all who hear these words, it is the truth for everyone and everything, everywhere, always. And so we are unified. We are bringing ourselves back consciously into alignment with the truth of our own being. And because we are conscious, more conscious than ever before of that connection, we allow that connection to inform all that we are about in the world. And so I affirm for each of us that all that we are and all that we are about, all that we do, all that we think and all that we say are becoming more and more aligned with the light of all being, with the truth. And we are part of that wave of consciousness that is illuminating the world, that is revealing more of this presence to the conscious minds and hearts of all 
who are open to it. And so I bless this shining light. I bless this yes that is happening. I bless this expanded consciousness through all of the tools and technologies that we use to express it. I'm grateful for it. And I give thanks for this Center for Spiritual Living and all Centers for Spiritual Living. All synagogues, all temples, all churches, all meeting rooms. All people everywhere who are dedicated to lifting consciousness. I am so grateful. I am so grateful for this gathering this morning and for the power of God present in each of us and living our lives with us, as us, and for us. I give thanks. And as I am grateful, I let go. I release my word into that divine heart of God where the law of God takes hold of it and makes it so according to our belief and acceptance. The truth of God is always taking form and shape. And we have aligned with a greater truth here now. And it shows up in our lives in greater and greater ways. So I let go of the prayer and I let go of the ideas, the behaviors, and the beliefs that have limited this experience of God in my life up until now. They served to bring me here. They served a divine purpose. They no longer serve, so I let them go. I let them go completely. And in that letting go, together we say, and so it is. I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. As I'm letting go, God's revealed and I am whole. I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. As I'm letting go, God's revealed and I am whole. letting go by singing I release. If that works for you, go ahead and stand up. We'll let it go. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit, yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go, I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide, yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. I believe you are. All right. All right, take a seat as we move forward. I'm only here for God. Stay present for God. That's awesome. All right, we're going to move into the time of sharing financially of our good, our tithes and offerings. It is an opportunity to recognize that one source that we just finished praying about that is God, that is the source of all good. It is the source of all the energy and good that is in your life. And the more you enter into the circulation of every good energy, the more you benefit from its flow. And that includes our finances. Our finances are, are in truth, limitless. We impose the limitations by our lives, and we've all done it, and this center has done it, but we are uh, moving away from that now and into a more thriving experience in all of the energies we share. As you give this morning, I am so grateful for that. This center is fulfilling its mission through your generous donations. And what we received this morning, 10% of it is returned to our denomination, which is a global work, which means that not only the work that we're doing here for outreach, but our Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide benefit from your gift because of our tithing to our denomination. So if you're giving this morning, I thank you for that. Use that gift to, to bless it uh, near your heart somewhere before we let it go. If you give another way, if you give via auto-tithe or you tithe, uh, give through our bookstore, whatever that is, 
I want you to use your connection card to symbolize that gift as you bless it. Hold on to the connection card. You'll let go of those later. But we're going to bless that gift in any way that it's given first. And would you please say after me, I give with joy and gratitude. I give with joy and gratitude. Knowing that as I give abundantly, I receive in like measure. Because God is all there is. And so it is. Leave it there. Oh, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Y'all sing. Leave it there, oh, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If the world from you withholds of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in God's word how it feeds the little birds. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Everybody, leave it there. Oh, leave it there, y'all. You take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And if you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. You take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If your body suffers pain, and your health you can't regain, and your soul is almost sinking in despair, well, he knows the pain you feel, he can't say he can heal. So take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Bolo. Leave it there, oh, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And if you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Repeat after me. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Rama. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Rama. Shri Rama J Rama J J Ram Sita Ram Sita Ram Sita Ram Everybody sing. Shri Ram J Ram J J Rama Shri Ram J Rama J J Ram Shri Ram J Rama J J Ram Sita Ram Sita Ram Leave it there, leave it there, oh, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And if you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. One more time, leave it there, oh, leave it there, y'all. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And if you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Yeah. So if you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. You take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. You just take your burden to the Lord and Leave it there. You take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Thank you. Thank you so much.
I'm happy to say that there is uh, product available. And is it in the lobby? On your way out the door, there, Grish has some wonderful CDs available. And um, thank you again, all of you, so much for being here and blessing us with, with your light this morning. Ah, all right. So, hi. You're still here. That's awesome. <laughs> Did I forget something, Liz? No? Okay, good. Good. So, uh, let's get up to our feet. We're going to close. We're actually ending. Post it on Facebook. The service is finally over. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, you're going to make a commitment to thrive this week, right? Right, right. So you'll turn in your connection cards and your, and your pens at the sanctuary doors as you leave. Um, stop for prayer first, either right here at the front of the room. Get a prayer from a practitioner or in our prayer room. Perfect way to uh, empower your day. So prayer first, then shop in the bookstore, grab a ticket for the luncheon, and then go over for lunch in the great room. It is only, uh, what is it? $20, $12, 10 wait, $10, 512 that's it, right, all right, so please say after me, today I say yes to thriving, today I, say yes to thriving. I am willing to feel connected, I am willing to, feel connected. To, earth to earth and to heaven, I commit to giving love, to giving love. And, to living love. and to living love, more and more every day, more and more every day. I, am so I am so blessed, and so it is. <laughs>